June 1812. Being within two hours rowing of the port, we set out in great spirits. The approach to Constantinople presents to the eye of a stranger a very singular and beautiful combination of land, water and foliage, with fine mosques and elegant minarets. We landed and a great crowd was assembled. Horses for the gentlemen and a sedan chair for me were in waiting. I was carried through steep, narrow streets and set down at a handsome house belonging to the embassy, termed the British Palace. In 1812, the distinguished Scottish diplomat Robert Liston was called out of retirement and posted here to Istanbul, then Constantinople, as British ambassador to the sublime port of the Ottoman Empire. Although he was almost 70 years old, he served for eight years in this most high-ranking of diplomatic roles, in this most complex, manifold and influential of capital cities. His wife, Henrietta Marchant Liston, accompanied him for the duration of his embassy. As ambassadress and ambassador, it was the pinnacle of their diplomatic career. They lived with a large embassy staff at the British Palace in Pera. As was her custom, Henrietta kept travel journals recording her experiences. And these have survived in the Liston Papers Archive at the National Library of Scotland. They sit alongside a wealth of documentation from the period. The Liston's dispatches, instructions, maps, and correspondence detailing their personal and professional relationships. My dear Dick, this country is certainly the most beautiful in the world. We walk when the weather allows it and pay visits to the Russian, Spanish, Swedish and Sicilian ministers. From the rest of the diplomatic corps and their friends, the war excludes us. The view from the top of our house is well worthy the pencil of an artist. We are out of your world, it is true, but we are in the Oriental one. Robert's skill and experience from earlier embassies to Turkey, to the United States and to cities all over Europe, was needed to facilitate and maintain good British-Ottoman relations. At this time, the Napoleonic Wars were defining international relations, and so Robert was instructed, as the representative of the British government and monarch, to frustrate an alliance between France and Turkey, to keep peace between Russia and Turkey, and to protect Britain's considerable trading relationship with the Ottoman Empire. I entered the first bazaar I had seen, and I believe the most singular. It is filled with drugs, dyes, sugar, gums, roots for washing embroidery, all from Egypt, which gives its name to this bazaar. In short, everything useful, beautifully arranged, both in substance and colour. The richness and the usefulness of Henrietta's journals comes from the diversity and breadth of experience that she records. Her visit to the Egyptian bazaar, the spice bazaar, where we are, the harvest of the mulberry leaves, the rose diamonds adorning the arms of the women in the seraglio, the rosebud confectionery she eats, the Turkish coffee, the Turkish saddles, the sights and sounds of Istanbul. Perhaps there is not in the world a tract of water so interesting as the Bosphorus. The European and Asiatic sides equally ornamented by fairy palaces of the sultans. Summer houses gilded in the gayest manner and arbours formed by spreading branches of magnificent trees under which the Turks delight to sit. In a letter to a friend, Henrietta stated quite emphatically that she was keeping her journals just for herself. And so it's the unofficial, uncensored, personal nature of the writing that makes it so fascinating. In contrast to the journals she kept as diplomat's wife in the United States, where she was close to the center of power, her writing from Turkey reflects a more complex and delicate style of diplomacy, and it's filled with a desire to understand her relationship to the Ottoman Empire, its culture and its power. We ventured on a fine day into the city as much incognito as possible. During our walk, Turkish women and children collected round me. Their intention was to look at my dress and to know how I could be veiled so different from them. I lifted up the muslin which covered my face, for it is held indecent to expose the face entirely, at which they laughed, nodded, and went off seeming to think me very good-natured. 
Although Henrietta was very much an insider in British society, she was an outsider here in Istanbul, but she strove to overcome that separation. She strove to overcome linguistic barriers, barriers of religion and her gender, and create bonds with people. Yesterday, I visited the Grand Vizier's Seraglio, and we found ourselves in a crowd of women. The younger were the concubines of His Excellency. Henrietta was interested in discerning the different characteristics of the international community of Ottoman Istanbul, but she was particularly interested in women, and she was honoured with an invitation to the Seraglio, the women's quarters, at the Imperial Palace. The lady of the house smiled and pointed for me to sit near her. I was pleased and surprised at the frankness and kindness of her behaviour. She said, as she had probably been instructed, that her Pasha and many good Turks thought the English the best allies Turkey could have. They had always found them upright and honest and not telling lies. I replied that I believed it to be the wish of England that the Turks should continue great and independent. She takes great pleasure in describing how she conversed through gestures mostly, almost zooming in on these intimate moments that she shared with them, how they taught her to eat Turkish kebab, how they marveled at her gloves, how they exchanged a diplomatic message. I was extremely pleased at having passed so many hours with a group of Turkish women and to see enough of their characters to form some idea of their humour and mode of life. The beauty and value of the archive is in part in the opportunity it gives us to contrast the Liston's experiences in North America, Ottoman Istanbul, and in other parts of Europe. Henrietta Marchant Liston may be a marginal figure, but as a historical subject, these margins can be wide, as expansive as her travels and as her own curiosity, expressed through her observations, prejudices, and sympathies. The Liston Papers Archive articulates grandeur, negotiation, celebration, ritual, violence, and intrigue. As she looks, overhears and judges, Henrietta expresses a sense of the strangeness and precariousness of life in Ottoman Istanbul. And the little histories she records deepens diplomatic history, women's history and literature. Before our departure, the Sultan sent Sir Robert a box handsomely set with diamonds and to me superb shawls of cashmere as a mark of the Turkish government's approbation of my husband's conduct during his embassy. With some difficulty, we made ready to quit our palace. Every local object became interesting to me by the painful idea of seeing it for the last time. 